Hi, I'm Mr. Cellini, and today we're going to talk about how to outline your history textbook. For this tutorial, I will be using my copy of Traditions and Encounters by Jerry Bentley and Herbert Ziegler, which is a popular textbook used in many AP World History classes. Outlining may seem like a daunting task at first, but with practice, you will become more efficient. I can't stress enough how important it is to read a paragraph first and then go back for a second read to begin the process of synthesizing information. This will help you commit the information to memory. When outlining a textbook, I prefer to use an alphanumeric system to organize information. This means that I will be using a combination of letters and numbers. For example, I would use Roman numerals for the chapter's main points or main section titles and then use capital letters for each subsection. We'll explore this format in more detail in a moment. Before we begin outlining, it's important to preview the textbook in order to get a sense of how the author organizes the text. This will help us decide which information will be assigned Roman numerals, letters, or numbers. For this exercise, I will be using chapter 20 of this textbook, which is called Western Europe During the High Middle Ages. As I flip through the pages, I notice that the chapter begins with a story about Niccolo and Maffeo Polo and their experiences interacting with the Mongols in Central Asia. We'll decide how we will incorporate this information a little bit later. As I continue flipping through the pages, I see a red heading titled The Establishment of Regional States, a smaller blue heading in italicized font called The Holy Roman Empire, and small titles in the margins called Otto I, Investiture Contest, and Frederick Barbarossa. Then we get additional blue headings, more small titles in the margins, and eventually another large red heading called Economic Growth and Social Development. Of course, like any history textbook, the chapter also contains many maps, images, and primary source texts. We'll discuss how you may want to incorporate these materials later in the video. Let's return to the beginning of the chapter and decide on how to organize our outline. Since the red heading appears first, and it is the biggest heading in terms of font size, we will designate a Roman numeral for it in our outline. This blue heading of the Holy Roman Empire is an example that supports the main idea of the section and will be assigned capital letters in our outline. We will use Arabic numerals to represent the small margin titles, which are specific details that correspond with each blue section. It is very important to decide how you will organize the various section titles and subsections before you begin outlining. Whatever you decide to use, make sure that you are consistent with your labeling. Let's move back to the beginning of the chapter and begin our outline. In my notebook, my first task is to designate a page for unfamiliar vocabulary that I will later write down and define. At the top of the page, write Chapter 20 Vocabulary. One sheet of paper, front and back, should be all the space that you need to define unfamiliar words in the chapter. At the top of the next page, I will write Chapter 20, Western Europe During the High Middle Ages. Notice how I am choosing to handwrite rather than type my work. I require my students to handwrite their outlines, since many studies have shown that doing so will increase the likelihood that the information will be retained. I would recommend outlining with a pen and paper whenever possible for this reason. Now, we have to decide how to incorporate the chapter introduction. In this particular book, each chapter is introduced with a story and a summary that highlights the major themes of the chapter. If your textbook has something similar at the start of each chapter, I would recommend asking your teacher or professor for guidance on how to proceed. I personally do not ask my students to outline this part of the chapter, since I know that this information will repeat later on. However, I would absolutely encourage you to read this information, since it will help you recognize the big themes that will appear in the main text. Don't forget, too, that other textbooks may be different. If anything, you may want to come back to this introduction after reading and outlining the entire chapter. Then, ask yourself, 
What key point from the chapter is the author looking to emphasize by using this historical event? Since this particular chapter is about how increased social and political stability contributed to economic and cultural developments in Europe late in the post-classical period, the author was probably using the story of the Polos to emphasize how Europe's rise allowed it to participate in more trade and diplomatic contact with Asia. So let's get back to our outline. We're going to move past the chapter introduction and proceed to the red heading titled The Establishment of Regional States. We have already decided to designate these headings as Roman numerals in our outline. So on my page, underneath the chapter title, I will write Roman numeral 1, period, the establishment of regional states, and then underline the title. It may be helpful to use different colored pens to represent the different colors printed in the textbook or to highlight the text later on. I have read the chapters in this textbook many times over the years, so I know that this first paragraph under the red heading is yet another summary of the content to follow in this section. Therefore, I will not be outlining the information here, but again, your textbook might be different and you might want to seek out your teacher to ascertain what they would prefer. Again, even though I am choosing to not outline this paragraph, I would encourage you to read the information here. Now, we will move to the blue subheading titled The Holy Roman Empire. In my outline, I will skip a line, indent, and write a capital A, followed by the blue heading title. I will also underline this title. Since there is a small title in the margin here, I will indent yet again and write an Arabic numeral number one, followed by a period, a space, and then the title Otto one. Now we have come to some text that we will need to condense into our outline. The first step I would always recommend is to read an entire paragraph at a time. This one begins with the phrase, as the Carolingian Empire faded, and ends with, thus was born the Holy Roman Empire. I recommend reading before outlining for two reasons. First, this will help you later determine the most important details from the paragraph. Second, waiting to outline information until later will force you to engage with the text multiple times, which should help you commit the information to memory. When outlining, I attempt to condense a paragraph into two bullet points in my outline. Use your judgment, though. If the textbook has paragraphs that are especially long, maybe three bullet points are necessary. This is a task that requires taking bits and pieces from multiple sentences and later combining them together. After reading the paragraph once to get a sense of what it's about, go back and read it again, but look for the five W's. Who was involved? What happened? When did it happen? Where did it happen? and why or how did it happen. If we were to identify the five W's for this paragraph, they may look something like this. For the who, I saw Otto and Pope John XII. For what happened, I saw that local authorities built larger states after the Carolingians, Otto expanded German territory, and Otto was proclaimed emperor by the Pope. For the where, I saw several places, Saxony, Northern Germany, lands east of the Elbe River, Italy, and Holy Roman Empire. For the when, I saw the mid-10th century and the year 962 CE. For the why and how, I saw used force and protected the church. You may want to take notes similar to these before you begin the process of outlining, at least until you get comfortable doing this in your head. It's important to now attempt to condense this information, since we want to avoid simply recreating the entire textbook inside of our notebook. This process of collecting and synthesizing information will also help you commit the information to memory. The first thing we can do is cut out some of the details. When trying to decide which people to include in your outline, I would look for two things. Is the person being referred to in one of the textbook's section titles? And is the person mentioned more than once in the paragraph? Otto I is mentioned in a margin title, and he is mentioned more than once in the paragraph. This likely means that he is historically significant 
and worth committing to our outline. Pope John XII is not represented with a margin title, and he is only mentioned once in the paragraph. Therefore, I will choose to omit his name at this time. We can also condense the information regarding regions. Since Saxony, northern Germany, and lands east of the Elbe River are parts of Germany, I will use Germany to represent those three places in my outline. Finally, since 962 CE and the mid-10th century are redundant, I will just use the phrase mid-10th century in my outline. This is a good time to mention that unless a specific date is mentioned more than once, it is extremely unlikely that you will have to commit it to your outline or to your memory. I can almost guarantee that your teacher, professor, or any standardized test will never ask you to recall the exact year that Otto was proclaimed the Holy Roman Emperor. History classes today are more interested in developing your ability to compare civilizations, analyze historical causes or effects, or explain historical changes and continuities over time. Therefore, I would not worry as much about specific years and instead try to gain an understanding of the general time period and the order in which events took place. Now that we have made some cuts to the basic information we have gathered from the paragraph, it is time to condense the information into two bullet points in our outline. This is a process that will take some practice, but it will get easier over time. These key points will be represented with lowercase letters and parentheses in our outline, and we should indent yet again. I chose to write in the mid-10th century, Otto expanded German territory by force after the fall of the Carolingian Empire. Then, in my second point, I wrote, crowned Holy Roman Emperor by the Pope. Notice that these phrases are not complete or grammatically correct sentences. Don't waste your time with complete sentences in your outline. The goal here is to be as efficient as possible. You should also get in the habit of using symbols for words or phrases that you use frequently. For example, instead of writing the word century, I chose to use a capital C to represent the word. I often like to use a plus sign to represent the word and, as well as an arrow to represent one historical development leading to another. You will see additional examples of this as we continue building our outline. We can now move on to the next paragraph, and we will continue to hold ourselves to the rule of using only two bullet points per paragraph. Remember, read the entire paragraph first. Then on your second read, make mental notes about the five W's and begin synthesizing the information into your outline. Just a quick note regarding reading the text. Every so often, it's possible that you may encounter a word or short phrase that you are not familiar with. It's a good idea to look up words that you don't know so that you gradually build up your vocabulary over time. However, when outlining, you want to be as efficient with your time as possible. Therefore, I would recommend looking up unfamiliar words that come up frequently. For example, you may not have encountered the term papacy before, and since it's coming up a lot in this paragraph and in the next, there is a very strong possibility that it's an important term to know. Since we are still working within the margin title of Otto I, our outline will continue with a lowercase c. Take notice of a few things that I've done here. Since the word papacy comes up often, and since I don't know what this term means, I have underlined it in my outline. I will now go back to my first page and write the term papacy and define it. Sometimes you can use your textbook to define key terms, but you may have to look on the internet to find an appropriate definition. In addition, I chose to use W slash papacy in order to represent the phrase with the papacy. Finally, I used a plus sign to represent the word end. I would recommend implementing shortcuts like this whenever possible, but just be sure to know what they represent when using them in your outline. Now that the two paragraphs corresponding to Otto I have been outlined, we now come to a new margin title of Investiture Contest. 
As stated earlier, we decided to represent margin titles with Arabic numerals in our outline. I am going to skip a line, and I will write the number 2 directly aligned with number 1 above. Then I will write Investiture Contest. Here's what I included for my two bullet points for the Investiture Contest paragraph. Again, take notice of some of the abbreviations and symbols used here. I used H-R-E-M-P in place of Holy Roman Emperor, an arrow to represent the phrase led to, and a plus sign to represent end. As before, I underlined the important key terms I did not know and defined them on the vocabulary page of my outline. Here's what I included in my outline to close out the Holy Roman Empire subsection. Again, notice how I skipped the line and aligned my number 3 with the number 2 that preceded it. There were two paragraphs in the textbook that corresponded with Frederick Barbarossa. I wrote two bullet points to condense this first paragraph and one to represent the second. We will now move on to the next blue heading called Regional Monarchies in France and England. Since this is the second time a blue heading has come up in this section, we will skip a line and use a capital letter B to represent this in our outline. Notice how I am perfectly aligned with the letter A that preceded it. Before we get to the margin title of Capetian France, we have two sentences of text right under the blue heading. From reading this textbook many times, I know that these sentences are offering a preview of what is to come in this portion of the chapter. Since it's short, I'm not going to skip it. I will simply condense the information into one phrase and place it after the title. Again, be sure to underline the blue title headings in your outline. Since we are in a new blue section, we will restart the numbering and assign an Arabic numeral number one to Capetian France. Here is what I included in my outline for Capetian France, as well as for the next two margin titles, the Normans and Norman England. Now, I will move on to the next blue heading, titled Regional States in Italy and Iberia. This will be represented by the letter C, since it is the third blue heading in this section of the chapter. There are three margin titles here, and this is what I have included in my outline for this information. I would encourage you to read these sections for yourself and analyze how I have condensed the information into my outline. Now we have arrived at another red heading within the chapter. Before we move on to the next section of the chapter, it's important to go back and review the various maps, primary source texts, or images that you may have missed. For example, there was a map on page 511 and images on pages 513, 514, and 515. You should always examine and try to make sense of these excerpts, since they will likely help you broaden your understanding of the main text. Consult with your teacher or professor about how these should be incorporated into your outline. I will show you what I have my students do with these materials. At the end of a section of the chapter, I have my students write the page number where a source is found, identify the type of source, and provide one to two sentences describing the main idea and any relevant observations. Here's how this would look in my outline. I will write page 511, map, shows many regional states in Europe between 1000 and 1300. Holy Roman Empire appears to be the largest. Then, I will write page 513, pick. French Capetian King Louis IX, shown listening to subjects and administering justice, demonstrates centralized rule. Here's what I wrote for the pictures on pages 514 and 515. Page 514, pick. Bayou Tapestry shows Norman conquest of England in 1066. Page 515, pick. Italian city-states like Florence grew during the High Middle Ages, located near waterways and protected using walls. Sometimes a chapter section contains a large primary source reading. While there isn't one in this section of the chapter, there is one that appears in the next, and it's on page 519. Again, 
ask your teacher or professor for guidance on what to do with sources like this. I have my students examine the source and provide a two to three sentence summary of the main idea. If I was including this source in my outline, it might look something like this. Page 519, text. In 1340, Francesco Balducci Pegolotti of Florence published a book of advice for merchants traveling to China. Suggests interpreters or guides are needed and that luxury goods can be acquired using silver. Let's get back to the main text and wrap up this tutorial. We decided earlier that red sections would be assigned Roman numerals in our outline. Therefore, we will skip a line, write Roman numeral 2, and write economic growth and social development. From here, you can repeat the same process we have used for the previous section. In the description below, you will find a link to a PDF of the textbook selections used for this tutorial, as well as a PDF scan of my corresponding outline. I would review these and get as comfortable as you can with the formatting of your outline. Thanks for watching and good luck with your studies.